This is my personal favorite. Great money thought, great wealth building thought. You ready? You can't have your cake. You can't have your cake and eat it too. That is the stupidest, dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Why in the world would you make a cake? Why would you turn on the oven, get the ingredients, put it in a bowl, put in the flour, put in the, the, the eggs and the butter, mix it all up in a pan, put it in the pan, let the cake rise, pull it out, put icing on it and say, sure can't eat that. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? No. No, it doesn't. Listen to me, gang. Some of you need to write this down. Cake was meant to be eaten. Get that? Cake was meant to be shared with other people who are less fortunate. Do you get that? Do you all realize that there's enough food in the world for no one in our world to go to bed hungry? Do you get that? That is correct. But only certain people have this knowledge, so the world goes starving. Right? But if we know how to make more than abundance of cake, can't we help feed the world or contribute to the world in a very positive way? Yes. Cake was meant to be eaten. More money thoughts. My mother used to tell me when I was growing up, when I was 16, 17 years old, and I had to learn about how money worked in the world. She would say to me, you think it's easy going out in the world? You're about to see that it's going to be hard. It's really, really difficult in the world. So here I am on television, 17, 18, 19 years old, making three times what my mother makes going to work. And I'm trying to figure out what? How do I mess this up so that it's really hard? <laughs> to get that? I'm not talking intellectually. I'm just talking like emotionally. Like if I'm sitting at home collecting checks, something must be wrong with the system. There's got to be a way for me to screw up the system. Because I was told it was going to be hard. I believe that. We do want to believe what our parents tell us, right? Yeah, we do. So I took that in. But there was another part of me that was like, that can't be right. And as time moved on, I started looking at, even though I was in that 1% of performers making their living, and even though I was making a great living, only work, I was working an average of 25 days a year, right, and making a great living and doing what I wanted with the rest of my time. I wasn't getting rich. Fifty to $100,000 a year, that was cool, not bad. How about that for 25 days? A year, good. Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> not bad, right, not bad. But that's not millions and millions and millions of dollars. And I suddenly realized that I really wanted to be rich. So I had to somehow look at my money thoughts. My, some of you know what I'm talking about. Your internal beliefs about what's real. Because it doesn't matter what I'm going to show you today. If you don't accept this as being real on some level, it's going to be hard for you to achieve it, whether it's through real estate or stocks or anything else. Right? So the battle is not really with these wonderful people around you who have all this information to share with you or me. It's within you. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you today, as we begin to take this journey, again, we want to add stocks to real estate investing. Why? We want more residual. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. As we begin to talk about this today, I do not want you to do this. So I'm going to ask you today to not or to resist the urge to be negative. You're going to learn something that you've never been taught before. Instead, I'm going to ask you to be what? Positive. Uh, no, you can't be positive. You don't even know if this system really works. Open but you open can be open. open. That is correct. Could you write that down? Not being, pop, not being negative, but just being open. That maybe there's something you were never shown before that you're about to learn. Right? Cool? Yes? Cool. Yes. Okay. So here's what we're going to do in our packet here. There's a section here about your financial education. And why do I put this in a packet that I want you to take home? Because today I'm going to ask you to join my program. Do you have to do it when I'm done? No. But at least if you learn something here that affects your consciousness, that's really important. So do you see the section here? I believe it is actually page three and four where it says your negative money thoughts. Get a pen. I'll give you 30 seconds to do this brief exercise. It's not for me. It's not it's no right answer. But I'm going to ask you to write down three ideas you heard about the stock market that's negative. Anybody ever know anybody who lose, lost a lot of money in the stock market? Mm -hmm. Right. So if you hear people who lose a lot of money, the last thing you want to do is what? Lose, lose a lot of money, right? Okay. So we're going to forget those people. But I'm going to ask you to write down three negative things you've heard about the stock market. Why? I don't want them to get in the way with what you're about to learn. 
everybody with me? Okay. 30 seconds of silence. Just write down what immediately comes to your mind about investing or trading in stocks, please. And I will time you. Seconds, please. And that's time. Thank you very much. Give yourselves a round of applause for doing that exercise. <laughs> I'm up here, but while you're talking to people, I want you to think about for the rest of the time that we have together today, your money beliefs, because they are powerful. They're the thing that either going to make you rich, keep you where you are, or only move you up just a notch instead of incredible sums of wealth. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to resist the urge to be negative, but instead to be what? Open. Yes. Should you be positive sitting here? No, because you don't really know if what I'm about to show you actually works or not. Some of you are going to find out in the next 90 days, like, oh, this is really, really, really good. Okay? But most of you don't know, and that's fine. That's why you're here, to get that financial education we've been talking about here today. All right. Now, I have a way of helping make people get rich uh, and earn residual income in the stock market. One of the reasons that they're all so successful when they join the program is because I keep things extremely simple. See, I'm one of these people that believe like if things are very simple, then you and I can succeed. But there's complexity in everything. Where the people who went to college, raise your hand. Where the people who have advanced degrees, master's degrees, they're really smart people. <laughs> yes, they like to take very simple things and make them very complicated because they spend all that money on that degree. <laughs> so they got to figure out some way to make this really hard. I like to make things really simple. So I use pictures, and we're going to start with something that I call, please don't get upset with me, just roll with me. I call this the Sesame Street version of investing. <coughs> you have Sesame Street out here in Santa Barbara? Oh, yeah. PBS, your local PBS yeah. station? Yeah. You really used to do if you grew up on Sesame Street like I did. There was always a comparison. One of these things is not like the others. Does everybody remember that? Put two pictures up. So I'm going to put two pictures up, and one... It's not going to look like the other one. So let's say you knew nothing about the stock market, but you wanted to use it as a way of generating wealth and income. Would you invest in a stock whose one-year chart looked like this? <laughs> or this? Now, we're going to call this choice A. And this is going to be called choice B. Which stock picture do you like the most? Do you like A or B? Both. Both. Well, some of you know a little something. There's a lot of money to be made here. Yeah. Right? But most of us prefer B. So, for the time that we have together, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. 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 B will always be the right answer. So you don't have a lot to figure out. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about wealth. Because as it was said earlier, we do not get a financial education in our public school system or our private school system. Only the wealthy tend to get a financial education. What does that mean? Because I learned something very early on. If you came from a family that was worth $300 million, dollars, right, at some point, someone in your family is going to sit you down, probably around your 17th or 18th birthday, and says, this is the person who handles our commercial real estate, this is the person who handles our bond portfolio, this is the person who handles our stock portfolio, this is the person who handles our overseas, here are their phone numbers, I want you to go call them. Does that make sense? Right. So you would sit down with those people and they would say, hi, great to meet you, and they bring you in their shiny offices and they pull out a chart and they start showing you things and you wouldn't know because you're only 17, which means that you can only give them the what? The Scooby-Doo look, which is what? <laughs> I don't know, Jack. 
<laughs> but they're showing you charts and graphs, and you're like, okay. And then over time, you're going to have a dialogue with your parents, and they're going to be able to explain this 300 million, how we got it, et cetera, et cetera. They'd be teaching you well. You get that? Let's just say, hypothetically, we did not come from a family worth 300 million dollars. Right? <laughs> just in case, this is on the outside chance that that was not your lot in life, and your family only made 100, maybe 102, maybe 50,000, maybe 30,000 dollars. Is anybody going to teach you how wealth works? No. no. They're going to teach you what? More overtime. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the wealthy keep teaching the wealthy how to get wealthy, and the lower section, lower socioeconomic keep teaching overtime, and the middle class teach mutual funds, right? Because that's where you're supposed. Which is odd because it's just the stock market, but somebody else is picking the stocks, and then you're hoping. You know what happens when you let somebody else pick your stocks with your retirement? You're hoping that they're right, right? Yes. You know why you're hoping that you're right? That they're right? So you don't have to eat cat food when you retire. Do you realize that? Yes? Yes, okay. So we don't want to engage in buy and hope. We want to have the education so that we're empowered or able to choose. Right? So I used to say $50 million. But today, for some reason, I'm feeling kind of good up here. I went with 300. But I went with 50. I was saying that in San Francisco once. A woman came up to me afterwards. And she says, my family has $50 million, Tyrone. But they didn't believe that the women should learn how to invest in money. And so I said, she goes, so I'm going to join your program so that I learn how to invest the money that I have. But of course, I was calm and poised. And I got off stage and I went back into the green room. I was like, damn, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it took my breath away. I couldn't believe it. But as a female, she was shut out. Does that happen in families? Oh, yeah. That only the men are supposed to learn. The fact of the matter is that we can all learn how to do this if we're open. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So we want to be able to choose investments that have a tendency to go up in time and not down. Right? Does everybody get that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now let's just talk about wealth building and I'll bring us right back to the stocks. It's a very interesting pattern I've learned. See, when I went to college, I knew I was going to be a performer, but I wanted a formal education because it seems like I should know a few things about the world other than lighting and set design and colors and all of that. So I chose to study psychology. And in psychology, they said, if you want to understand people, you look for patterns in their behavior, patterns in their thought patterns, their behavior, how they play it out. And I, that always stuck with me, because in the stock market, it's the same thing. You're looking for the same pattern over and over and over again, and that's how people get rich. So I thought I would take my psychology background, and I would only buy stocks that were doing this, right? Now, if I just bought stocks that were doing this, would that help me? Would that help raise my wealth? Yes, yeah. yeah, so I'm just going to do this over and over and over and over because I'm going to start with the pictures. Is everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, watch this. Here's what middle class people do as opposed to very wealthy. So a middle class person says, I'm going to start my own business. Why are you going to start your own business? Because I'm going to be my own boss. I'm going to make my own hours. Right? So I'm going to use a dry cleaning store as a wonderful example here. This middle class person, they find a spot, they think of the dry cleaning business, you don't actually do it, you send the search, 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 search. Can you hear me this morning? Oh, I flew in last night with a little loopy, that's what it is. Take these shirts and you send them out, someone sends them back and you charge people for the service. Pretty good business? Yes. So I have a dry cleaning store and I'll hire one or two people to work for me. And by the way, who owns their own business? Isn't it easy to find people who show up on time with great <laughs> So that means that you, as the business owner, wind up being there more than anybody else. Now you have your own set of handcuffs on. But you're middle class and you're your own boss. Pretty good way to get rich, isn't it? Yes, that's what a middle class person would do. But I noticed an interesting pattern. By the way, no matter how much money you get, are there people who have more money than you? Yes. yes. So if I have a million dollars, am I hanging out with people who have a million dollars? No, I'm hanging out with people who have 30 million. Then I feel really small, but at least I can learn from them, correct? So here's what they do. I'm at a party in Malibu, and I notice a pattern that rich people, write this down, get your pens ready, buy things to sell them. That's how they get rich. Middle class people buy things to hold on to them, right? So if you were always buying something to sell something, you would be wealth building. Does that make sense? There are certain assets you want to hold on. I told you this was Sesame Street. It's like Wealth 101. 
because if you can get this, then you can get every investment you ever make. Rich people buy things deliberately to sell them. So, 